Okay, what I'm going to do is I'm going to talk about, I, 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 I presented uh, TAMSTAT at the past two uh, dialogue conferences, I've presented TAMSTAT in its latest iteration, but I've uh, started using it uh, back in the uh, spring of t 2016 in my classes, and I wanted to explain what, 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 I, what was good about it, what, what students liked about it, what they didn't like about it, and what I'm doing to improve the system based on student, student feedback. So basically, using TAMSTAT in the classroom, uh, in spring of 2016, uh, I taught a class, uh, Statistics for Business 2, which is inferential statistics. It was an undergraduate course. Uh, inf inferential statistics and regression. And then um, I taught a management science class, which is co often called decision science. And the second, one of the topics we discuss is simulation. And simulation involves uh, uh, um, so I wanted to uh, show how, how in both of those classes how the students reacted, and they reacted rather differently, so I wanted to kind of mention that. Uh, in the, the, this, uh, this fall, I'm, I'm teaching the beginning statistics undergraduate course. Um, basically, statistical measures, probability, discrete, and continuous distributions, and I have, uh, I have told the students to um, uh, download, I've given them a, a copy of uh, TAMSTAT, an, a, a .exe file that they can, that they can use. Um, in addition to that, I, uh, I've, I've, I've created a, uh, a user guide that, they could, that they have a PD, they've gotten a PDF of it, but I've also printed up several copies of it. As a matter of fact, um, I can pass this around if, if uh, people want to, uh, if you, if you want to glance through it while I'm doing the presentation, I'll just pass it around. So what were the reactions? Well, I'm going to talk about the management science module, a class that I was teaching first. This was, these were graduate students, and it was a, it was a module. It was like a one-month uh, course, four times a week. And the, the fourth lesson was where we did the, uh, the simulation. And so what happened here, um, generally a positive response. Uh, I, um, what was nice about it was usually they, uh, the students would use a program called Crystal Ball that ran on top of Excel. And they, uh, the university had it installed on all their computers, but the problem was that the students, if they wanted to install it on their personal computer, they had to download a free version. They got to keep it for 15 days. It was kind of pain, pain to use. And so um, I just gave them a, a .exe file, which they could just put on their computer, download it right away, and no installer was necessary. So that was, that was a good feature of it. Um, so I think they, they tended to like it. And uh, generally, they, um, it was easy to install and easy to run for them. And what, what I found was that uh, I allowed them to use it on a take-home final exam, and they did rather well on it. Uh, I think they did better than they did using the um, uh, simulation program Crystal Ball. And so generally, I got very positive feedback for this graduate level course. Um, on the other hand, um, I started using it uh, for my undergraduate course, and there were a couple of complaints about it. And I just wanted to go through them and, and mention what I've, what I've done to address these problems. The first complaint was TAMSTAT won't run on a Mac because it's, I'm using the standard uh, GUI in, in, in dialog. They weren't able to use it on a test, but they weren't able to use the other program either. So, but they all said, if, they, if, we learn, if I learn the TAMSTAT syntax, I'd like to be able, able to use it on a test. Students pay more attention to tests than, than the content, so, so they usually ask about that. And the third complaint was um, basically understanding TAMSTAT syntax, okay, because it's APL syntax. So what did I do to address these problems? The first thing was, um, well, now that we Dialog has a free download, um, it permits use on a Mac, so they can run, they can just load the workspace without using the graphical user interface on a Mac, so they'll be able to do that this time. Um, 
And uh, I've been talking to Brian a little bit about uh, HTML5 as another possibility to, get, to allow them to get access to the GUI. Um, in terms of using TAMSTAT on a test, um, they, they couldn't use Minitab or Excel, which they normally use on a test either. Um, however, I did have an experience over the summer where I had an individual student that, that they didn't offer statistics over the summer, so an individual student needed to take it, so I gave him a, a, a reader course, they called it, where he would just come into my office and I would give him homework problems and a test and he would come into my office with any questions. So I gave him a copy of the TAMSTAT user guide and, and gave him TAMSTAT and I could work with him one-on-one. -on -one. And uh, that seemed to work, uh, work, work pretty well. Um, in terms of understanding the syntax of TAMSTAT, basically um, what I've done this year was uh, I added a little chapter to my user guide, uh, basically preliminaries. And I, I spent a, a classroom experience explaining uh, the ideas of uh, functions, arrays, and, and uh, basically APL concepts to the students. And um, the second thing I've done was create some expression builders in TAMSTAT itself. And I want to demonstrate, I'm going to demonstrate some of those. Um, and it kind of helps them build uh, APL expressions uh, in TAMSTAT. So basically what I do is I tell them about arrays, scalars, vectors, and matrices as items, lists, and tables. And th that's something that they can relate to. And then I talk about functions. Most of them have taken a uh, calculus or a pre-calculus course, so they understand what functions are. So I mentioned monadic, dyadic, and what I call summary functions, which are something like um, uh, generally uh, monadic functions, Square root, dyadic would be you know, plus times divide. And summary functions are functions of a bunch of variables that, that compress to a single value, which is like plus reduction, it, it's compressing. We have a lot of those functions in statistics, and so I introduce that concept of a summary function so that they can uh, at least get that concept down. And then I do introduce operators. Um, this is sort of an advanced technique, but if they've taken uh, calculus or even pre-calculus, they've been exposed to uh, operators, although they don't know it. So I think of the derivative as an operator, basically takes a function, puts it, maps it into another function. Uh, if they haven't had calculus, uh, the inverse function is uh, basically, I mean, the, uh, the inverse of a function, the inverse itself is an operator that takes a function and maps it into its inverse. And of course, they've been exposed to function composition, which basically is an operator. And so um, these are the levels that, that, that they do. So, so I'm, I, I'm, I'm teaching them APL, but with the knowledge that they have already, um, basically with concepts that they're familiar with. So it's not totally new to them. One of the things I want to do is keep things simple. Um, I'm debating on the, on the, uh, the, the right-to-left syntax that, that Dialog uh, uh, APL uses. And so what I do is keep the expressions relatively simple so they don't even have to worry about that. If, they keep it, if you re keep it to one or two functions um, and uh, with the addition of certain operators, you, don't, you can have a fairly sophisticated expression without, uh, without having to worry too much about the order of operations because that, that would be something that would be foreign to them. Expression builders. Now, what, what I did here was students, uh, particularly with the student I had over the summer, I found I got positive reactions with the expression builders because basically it's just menu driven. You just fill in the blanks instead of having to figure out, well, how do I do this? So I have uh, the first one I built was a distribution wizard, and I'll demonstrate that. Uh, basically, this does prob probability critical values, basically all your tables in, in statistics can be handled with this distribution wizard um, if you want to get certain values out. Um, I, I created a hypothesis wizard which will do hypothesis testing, um, a graphics wizard which will allow you to do some basic graphics, and uh, a regression wizard which will allow you to do linear regression. And so I'm going to demonstrate, I want to demonstrate these uh, these four things. Um, so let's see how, let, let, let's, I'm going to, let me fire up TAMSTAT. So 
when they when they when they when they bring up Tamstat, they just get this they get this uh, screen here. And so what I'm going to do is I'll show first I'll demonstrate the distribution the distribution wizard. And um, so what what does it look like? Basically, it comes up and the, over here we have uh, a distribution, and the distribution works with a. Um, I have one function for each distribution. Many systems like um, Excel have have lots of different functions for each distribution. What I did was I take a sim simple distribution and, and pair it with an operator and a relational function. And so for example, if I want to talk about, let's look at the binomial distribution. Over on the right are the parameters. So if I, if, if I select binomial, the parameter list changes to n and p, the number of trials, and p is the probability of success. And so supposing I want to say, if I toss five coins, so I'm doing five trials, so I'll just put in five. And the probability of, of getting ahead or a success is 50% or one half. And so uh, what's the probability that I get exactly binomial probability equal to two? What is the binomial probability that I get exactly two heads? So what I do is I hit calc. Oops, let me. And it gives me the, this is the uh, Tamstat expression. This is basically APL. Binomial is a uh, function. Probability is an operator. Equals is a function. So binomial probability equal to two. And then it gives me the result. Now, another little feature, if I want to graph it, I can hit graph and it kind of displays what's going on here and this th th this is the binomial distribution so you can just generate a little graph and do that. Now another thing that's in that's interesting is you can do supposing I say well, what's the probability that I get um, no more than two heads I would do, do less than or equal to and then if I hit uh, if I hit graph it'll display it and it will also do the calculation so 0.5, 50% chance of getting less than or equal to two heads. So I can do various things like that. Now, on the other hand, we can deal with continuous distribution. So for example, the normal distribution, which is used a lot. Uh, what if I want to figure out the normal probability that um, that's less? Now, I don't want to say equal because you can't, when you talk about the continuous distributions, you have to use a cumulative probability. So I'll say less than or equal to one and a half, and I'll hit graph. And I get, um, it, will it, will, it will calculate the normal probability. This is basically what comes out of your typical normal table. Now, a lot of times you want to find the probability that instead of being less than or equal to a value, you want to find the upper tail value. So what I can do, and I don't know of any other statistical package that does this, most of them will give you the cumulative, but if you want to say, well, what's the probability that it's, uh, say, greater than one and a half, so I can, hit, I can hit, hit graph, and it will give me the upper tail. So um, the fact that I'm using an operator, basically I have the distribution, the operator and um, the distribution and the relation are the left and right operands, and so you can, you can do a lot of things with that. Uh, I can even do something like, uh, I can select between, and I can say, what's the probability that it's between, that a normal distribution is between one and two? And then I can hit uh, graph, and it will give me uh, that, and, it, and the, you have the illustration of, of the distribution, and so you can kind of see what's going on there. Again, you have the, you, you, and you have the parameters. It, it defaults to the mu of zero and sigma of one, the, the mean of zero and standard deviation of one, but you can change those to, to actual values from the real world as well. Now, we can do other things. For example, the normal distribution tables are, are normally are set up with probabilities, but you can, if you want to do something, say, with the t distribution, for example, um, t dist, I can say t dist, 
and I want to change this to, uh, usually this is an upper tail, and it, instead of being a probability, what we want is a critical value because it's the t, dis, the t table is usually set as a, as a uh, is, is usually set up with critical values as opposed to probability. So I could say t dist critical value greater than and uh, what what's the uh, I'm sorry it should be less than what is the value of the t distribution which is less than five percent of all values and so I can hit the calculation and oh let me change the degrees of freedom to five say you, you you need to give it the degrees of freedom and then you would sit you would hit graph and it gives you the distribution um, another one is like the the f distribution for example and then you have two sets of degrees of freedom this is a com commonly used in analysis of variance and other other um, things and you would have you would say what's what's the critical value let's say I have um, 9 over 12 degrees of freedom and again if you're not familiar with statistics you may not know this but this is this is so that students can uh, they can play around with this and you get a, it, it it generates the actual uh, distribution and the curve and then if you want you can actually use this little slider bar and, and move it move it back and forth and play around with that. Can your students use yeah. it? Or do they? Yeah, well, well I'm, I'm, this is the first semester that I'm trying it out on them, so I, I haven't got to that point yet. So I'm, next year I'll, I'll, I'll give you a nice report on it. <laughs> uh, okay, um, all right, so in addition to that, we've got, I, I've got two more wizards um, that I, 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 and I, let me just, I'll just kind of briefly explain the hypothesis wizard. If you, um, I, I loaded in some data from, I collect data from my students every, every semester and, and then I use it. So for example, I take the student's height. So if we take the height d dot height, this is in a, um, what I do is I import data into a namespace and then the namespace, the variable in the data is a list of heights. And so if I say uh, d dot height and I wanna say what's the, um, um, the uh, what I wanna do is te test the hypothesis that the average height is 68 inches, for example. And if I hit uh, get parameters, it'll read in the data from, from so I have a sample size of 27. The sample height is 68.98 and the standard deviation is 3.93. So then I can, uh, if I hit calculate test statistic, it generates a report and it shows that um, this is my test statistic, this is my p-value, which is, uh, this says, uh, uh, given the data that I have, um, I could get a result that's that far away 20% of the time. And so you can, you can run uh, hypothesis tests on means and proportions and various things like that. So I just did the mean, but you can select whatever you, what, whatever you want. If you want the mean, the proportion, standard deviation, variance, whatever, you can, t you can do hypothesis tests on that. Now, I wanted to show you the, um, uh, the, the last one I wanted to show you was the regression wizard. And so let me, um, let me just, uh, here's, here's a regression problem, CSI Scranton. You are investigating a murder and you find a bloody footprint near the victim. When you measure it, it matches a size nine and a half shoe and you wanna know how tall the su suspect is. So in order to do that, what we need to do is go into Tamstat and we're going to take a, we're, we're going to try to find the relationship between shoe size and height. And so what we're going to do is, let me go back to Tamstat here. And I'm gonna to go to my regression wizard. And here we have a, uh, so basically the, the Y value would be the height and the X value would be shoe size. So we go down and find shoe size. And so now I put that in and so now I, I would hit regress, okay? And it calculates the, um, the coefficient 
50, 51.05 is the, is the intercept and 1.74 is the slope, okay? The shoe size here? No, I, I have a, all I've done is this is the I have a I have a, a list of shoe sizes and a list of heights. Shoe size is a, is a, is a vector of, of shoe sizes, and um, and height is a vector of heights. So what I'm trying to do is if I if I know the shoe size, I should be able to predict the height. And so um, now uh, I, I've predicted that, and. And then what I can do is I can input, okay, let, let's say, I, here's where I'm going to put the shoe size in. My shoe size would be 9.5. That's the one I want to predict, okay? So I, what I want to do is use, use the model. So these are the coefficients. This is the standard error, okay? And then the, they're both significant because the p-values are very small. So now I'm going to plug in 9.5, okay? And... Oh yeah, by, by the way, down here is the expression that I use to generate the, regress, the re regression model. And model is a namespace which contains a bunch of things. Uh, it contains the parameter, it contains the, the intercept and the slope and a bunch of other things that are related to regression. Um, so now I put in nine and a half, okay, and then I want to hit, uh, what I'm going to do is hit predict. And then what it does is it, it um, it, it predicts the um, it, it predicts the height, okay? And so basically, what's going on here is the actual height. It plugs in 51.05 times nine and a half plus 1.7465, and it will give you the height. But what it actually does is you, the actual height is, is, is just a point estimate. What we want here is this confidence interval. So we can predict that the height of the perpetrator is between 66.76 inches and 68.49. Well, that's the confidence interval. What we really would like to have is a prediction interval. So, um, but anyway, what, what you do is it, it gives you a range of, it gives you a range of, of heights predict that that you can predict and what's happening is it generates you see where it says model dot f f is a function and it's inside the namespace and so that they can generate they can use that function that's the th that's the function that generates the uh, the actual height um, another thing you can do is plot the residuals and you and it will it will take the uh, the data from from the height that you um, it, it will take the it will compare the residuals to um, to the actual values that you get to the y values and it will and it will and it'll generate some graphics there okay and so um, these are tools that I'm putting out there to, to allow students to 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 input instead of just typing in straight line expression you know just instead of just having a session they can actually um, uh, use a menu driven type of thing where they can select they can select from a drop down or something like that in order to uh, calculate what they're doing uh, so that this is this is basically what I have so um, does anybody have any questions I don't have a question but I have a comment okay I could have used this when I was in college <laughs> <laughs> Uh, speaking of that, I approached a, a university a couple of years ago about using APL, and the first thing they told me was, well, we don't use Windows because that costs money. We use Linux. So uh, what about Linux? Well, I suppose if I could get it, uh, I mean, I, I suppose if I could get it running on, uh, if I could get HTML, well, HTML5, I assume, runs on Linux, too. So the I mean, a, if I can... The APL part is the critical part. What, yeah. what about getting that on a, an, well, an APL the, version of this that runs on Linux, is what I'm saying. Oh. It will run, yeah. It but. should run. I mean, if, if I didn't use the graphical stuff. Yeah, the graphical. Part. I mean, if I just go to, basically, if I just go to the session, uh, uh, I, I can even, you know, just get into the native session, uh, and I can, I can just type, uh, you know, mean 28513, right. and it just does, so that, stuff, does that stuff should be available. So it's, the, G, it's the, the GUI you've built would have the to GUI, be reconstructed. Yeah, the GUI is, is, is something I added just because students like working with, they don't like working with you know yeah. sessions. So I think that's a great idea. Yeah. Okay, so that's basically what I what I what I've been trying to do here. So. 
Okay. Thank you.